I remember in my room I was doing this gig, like a talk show that was very famous that time. And I actually put it out there saying that it's been seven years. I was, I was acting as if I'm already an I'm actor acting. and I've really made it very big wow. and all. And uh, I said that, you know, it's been seven years. After seven years, I got my first movie audition and it clicked. Nidra exactly happened seven years after I joined Baldiwell Associates. Wow. Exactly seven years later, I got a movie called... And you need to manifest first, something right now. I know, really. <laughs> and this show is going to be amazing. Oh, What's it called? Design yeah. FM. Yes, this Design FM. Like, Villaroy and Bach presents The Design FM, powered by Inglaze. Curated by Establish, in association with Boeing. This is Sakina from Establish Design, and today with me I have the very young, charismatic, handsome dude interior designer Ali Baliwala from Baliwala Edge. Hey Ali, welcome to the show. Hi Sakina. Tell me, how is it you are Ali Baliwala from Baliwala Edge, the son of Bakir Baliwala, legendary Baliwala associate? Tell me, how does that feel? Firstly, thank you so much for a lovely introduction. And you're really, really I humble deserve. and so sweet. Uh, well, um, it, is, it is surely a big responsibility when your father has been in the business for 45 years. And you're stepping into those shoes and trying to be and, you know, create a mark for yourself. But uh, it feels good. It feels good. The pressure is good because it helps you evolve as a designer. The responsibilities help you churning out to be the designer you want to be and your father wants to see you as. So I'm very happy where I am right now. Ali, I want to go back to your early years. Hmm. You are the sober boy. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, uh, the sober attitude, the sober being there. Tell me where is the sober bit started from? I'm very humble. This is just, this is just the facade, okay? I'm not this person. <laughs> because I keep getting people like me, you are so sober and you're so snooty and I'm just not like that at all. But having said that, yeah, heart say full sober. Uh, Kalaba is my hub. home, my hub. Everything around Kalaba is home for me. Uh, so, I studied in GD Sumani at Kaf Parade. Um, then I went to HR. And then I did my interiors from Rachna Sansad. So that was like closer to the ceiling. So it was a little difficult, but I managed. <laughs> okay, tell me, uh, interior design was a choice or did it just fall in your plate because dad was Baldiwala Associates? So honestly, it wasn't my first choice. Uh, my first choice was acting. And my second choice was graphic design and animation. But uh, I terribly failed in the graphic exam, the ent entrance exam. I don't know how because I actually did a good job, but an interiors I just like I think I came third or something in these exams or something was there and I ranked really well, uh, so I took it up. It was a choice, of course it was a choice that I made, but there was a little bit subconscious pressure that was there in my head that you know Dad wanted me to be an interior designer. He wanted me to be an architect, and he wanted me to um, take the legacy forward. So you know, he said, okay, you do anything with acting, but I mean with films, but not in front of the camera do direction, do editing, do anything behind. And I'm like, how does that even make sense? Because he wanted to be a director oh. himself in his younger days. Oh. So that did not happen. And then interior is just where I went to the flow and the uh, rest is history. So early years, you were with dad. Yeah. Okay. And you must have seen your dad operate. Whereas in those times, uh, you know, the designer's opinion was the final verdict. Oh, yeah. Now when you practice... It is, the client is very well exposed. They have other platforms to kind of conflict opinions right. and preferences. So how do you manage and adapt that change with clients? So honestly, I've seen, I've seen uh, with dad as a child, as a kid, even I think when I started almost 11, 12 years ago with Firoza and Yetharwala also, I, I have seen that the, they had that final verdict. They had that say in the matter that, no, this will look good. Let's just go ahead with that. And the clients would, listen sometimes not but eventually they would listen to designer i think the last seven eight years there has been a change social media pinterest yeah. like yeah. and those references that they get and say that oh you know why can't we do this so there's a lot of criticism also that comes around um they don't like what we sometimes show them they can't visualize it so what i use as a practice is that i this is where my drama comes in. So I... The act of it. The act of it comes in. When you I get there. Where, where I'm like, you know, with all expressions, explaining to them, they listen, you know, you don't know how it's... Let me explain it to you. It's going to be, it's going to be nice. So right now we're working on a concept uh, for brutalism, meets flamenco. 
uh, for a bungalow and the client said what have you and I've done two three projects with them already and they said what is this design it's like a khandar you know it's so dark and it's so dingy and on site when I explained it to them and the expression and I was like this is going to happen like that the flamenco dance is about this brutalism talks about this the ripples and all and she's like I'm convinced <laughs> oh, wow you know so it's the way you explain narrate yeah, the, the entire narrative. Yeah, narrative and also a lot to do with um, just reasoning out communication mm. you know explaining and it's not always that we are right the clans can also be right so if we talk it out we discuss it i think you know that's the open mindedness i think now every profession needs right, right? okay ali tell me about baliwala edge mm. how was it born and why was the need for a baliwala edge i've owned it wow okay i've owned this that. because my dad um dad was obviously very very hung on Baldiwala Associates for a very long time. He's been in the field for almost forty-five plus years. So Baldiwala Associates was something that he created uh, for thirty-five, forty years. Baldiwala Associates was there and did very well. Um, when I joined him in two thousand and ten, I remember telling him that Dad, I want to change the name. I want to change the office address. He said, "Don't, like, yeah, keep like quiet. Just shh." And I was like, "Okay." One year, two year, ten years later, I. told him that we need another address we need another space i do respect the fact that you've born your you sentimental values you hold to this place but we need a change we need a shift so he took some time but he agreed and we had this whole conversation and discussion over the dining table where he said okay fine let's do it what is in mind the fact that he said that um somewhere fell have arrived You know, you rightly said you've earned it because yeah. you are carrying the legacy of Baldiwala, yeah. which your dad has put in so many yeah. years, and he allowed you to take it ahead as Baldiwala Edge. Yeah. So you rightly said you've earned it, and he kind of trusts you now. So now tell me, after Baldiwala Edge, how are dinner table conversations? They're very different. Uh, I, I, they're very, very different. There are discussions on. Um, actually, we don't discuss work at home. We discuss only in the office, but. Uh, I wouldn't say tables have changed or turned, but yes, that has. That is the reason I am here. Sure. I had a platform to start off with, you know, which is very, very difficult to even make a name in this industry, sure. and especially in those days. Um, the conversations now are more about. This is where I enjoy it. Like he, he also looks forward to, you know, advice from me. Oh, lovely. He looks forward to. He questions me in ways that. I know you know I mean it's a father son thing where you yeah. feel like there are times and I also like with my nephew I feel like you know I know it all but what do you think yeah. and those are the conversations we have and it's a lot of fun because I'm like okay you know I know he wants my advice but he's not just saying it he's like what do you think I've done this what do you think about it and I'm like <laughs> dad you can just say that you know you yeah, no but the father son dynamic is like is that, that right it's it's I'd say very passive very passive you very know, cute egoistic yeah like very very cute <laughs> egoistic right word there Okay, yeah. tell me, Ali, how have you evolved since your Bali Villa edge? So, so you know, honestly, for me, uh, the location change that happened with now we have an address in Kolaba, close to home. Once uh, again, the sober bit. Oh God, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said that. No, but very happy and very proud to have this space for ourselves. Um, what's changed is that, in fact, it's not that Bali Villa associates changing to Bali Villa edge. The journey has changed too much for me. I think every year as a designer, I'm evolving. I'm changing. my clients make me change they mm-hmm. they teach me things with every project i've learned um unlearned i think it's a process whether it's you know i've worked with feroza netherwala for 2 years uh, at the start of my career and then joined dad but i realized that every day is a learning experience i mean they are established designers in themselves and they're doing fantastically right. well they're a huge yeah. name well it's them but it's my father i think age doesn't matter it's you Absolutely. keep evolving even at that age they are learning My dad wanted to get into engineering right now. He wanted to get wow. work on civil engineering and do some sort of a course. So I think you just evolve, and I think that's what I'm doing. Nothing has changed from Baldiwala Associates to Baldiwala Edge, but something keeps changing every year with projects and the design. Tell me, what is the most challenging project that you have that comes to your mind uh, when you talk of Baldiwala Edge? Is there troubleshooting that you've done over there? Okay, so there's this recent project, and. Um, I had a client who was uh, extremely hyper. Like he wanted things yesterday, not in yesterday. He wanted things 15 days back. Hello, I'm not some magician over here. You know, like it takes time. Uh, there's a lot of stress 
four months, my family kept telling me, we've never seen you so stressed. You look stressed all the time. Uh, what's mm. this project, you know? I said, it's a great project. It's a lot of fun. But it's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. I mm. wouldn't lie, I had a lot of anxiety. But uh, having said that, the project did really well and that's what really matters, you know? And taking away from that, uh, what I learned is what you asked me, um, how to work under pressure, mm. how to choose your client, how to say no. Oh, that's I am, important. I am very bad at that. Uh, whoever's listening to me, I, I can't say no now. <laughs> I, I can't say no. But I'm a people pleaser. I love the fact that people are happy around me. I just like it. Yeah. But I think it's important to sometimes just say no and, yeah. you know, just turn the conversation. Turn the conversation. True. Ali, I want to touch your fashion aspect. Okay, mm. I have observed you, seen you. You're a real fashionista. Oh God! Fashionista. Okay, I have seen you try wonderful patterns, colors. You have a sense of matching colors, be it on yourself. I've seen a few on your projects also. Tell me, how does that happen? You blend cultures also very well with colors and you know the kind of clothing you do. Yeah. I have never seen you uh, in the regular stereotype cuts, as I may call it. So tell me, how does that play a role with your designs? So again, I, I enjoy I enjoy dressing up. I love I love shopping. I think it's therapeutic for me. Uh, my mom used to be like that. Oh. And I just recently realized that she's obviously no more. It's been years now. But my sister told me this, that, you know, mom would, at every occasion, she would shop okay. something new. And I that's something my friends keep mocking at me and saying that, you know, like, you have too much money, you keep spending. But I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's therapeutic and also... Our field is a lot about aesthetics. And mm -hmm. I've got this from my dad and my uncle. Both of them are very, very high on fashion. Uh, they are. And um, so I think it comes from there. How I merge that with my interiors is colors, like you rightly yeah. said. I mean, yeah. there's this one project called Quirk Box where we've filled the house with colors, but we very strategically place those colors in different ways. Um, patterns. I enjoy wearing it because it just creates a mood. It creates, mm. it just, it's a feel good factor, right? So why not? Even textures, I believe, because I've textures. seen you experimenting with a lot of textures yeah. also. We layer a lot of textures in our projects and um, the, re the way we get colors together is basically bringing in, if it's only whites, then it's also that the white's not monotonous. We mm. layer it with different whites, mushrooms and textures like a boucle fabric with a texture paint behind and then a white art on top of it. So, so do you think your audience now is open to those color palettes that yeah. you put forward or always there's a rejection and probably you study the personality and then put forward those things or how does that work? So for me, honestly, working with the clients and this is what I've learned from not only your father but also Firoza is that the client's brief is the most important. Mm -hmm. I still take that, uh, you know, from them and I, I believe in that also because if I am designing a house for a particular client, it's their story to tell their friends and family when they come over mm. or they're living it. True. It's not my story. So I'm not one of those designers who will tell you that this is the only thing that looks nice. No, it is what do you like, mm. right? And then we will work around our aesthetic sense. But what do you like? Do you like sitting on the floor? Okay, we'll give you something on the floor. I will not tell you no, you like sitting on the floor, but I'll make you sit on the yeah, couch. The lifestyle change has to be there. I'm not saying no. We have to upgrade their lifestyle in a Correct. particular manner. But how we do it is very subjective and personal. Synonymous with their personality. Absolutely. And their habits. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember that one bit of you, I don't know where I've seen you, where, uh, you know, you did say that in COVID times, you mm. worked in the kitchen. Yeah. And then you understood why clients wanted the kitchen cabinets in a yeah. particular manner. Oh God, that was a, uh, that was, yeah. I remember this, it was a utility area yes. and uh, I was mopping the floors every day. Uh, house help decided to leave just before COVID. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a great exercise. But yeah, the way I was keeping the, the mops, the way I was keeping the detergents, the way I was keeping those clothes in those laundry baskets, everything changed. 
we don't yeah. realize in our day to day lives you know we have help in india everyone has help and you know they have these uh, the way they do things you don't know but when you do it yourself you realize it so again it's like method acting it's like method characterization and or you're like yeah. method understanding of what the right. clients are going through and how they're living in their house and how you can upgrade that at the same time how can you fit in your aesthetics with all of it yeah put forward in your design absolutely okay can you tell me one project where mm-hmm. your this fashion sense has really played up in designing the project and executing it so in the past it has been but i'll talk about recent times i have started it's actually the flip side i have started um wearing clothes or dressing up in a way that makes me feel good on site on that wow. particular project it sounds absurd it sounds bizarre <laughs> but uh, it's it's a lot of fun I, i feel like if i am doing a home that's got like a very japanese japandi kind of a concept or something and i'm in the mood on site that day to discuss the designs in a particular manner i like going easy breezy kurta and pants and something like that very like linens and cottons so i enjoy playing so it's the other way around it's not yeah but i th- i believe that the client also gets at that vibe out of they it. do and they fall into yeah. that yeah that you know persona that yeah. okay it's a cool discussion and yeah. we we'll take it that and way and then you know if it's a bright day you wear bright color and their moods are not good just bright things are up nice. so it's just like a lot of fun and play on site oh nice yeah. okay ali now the actor so i've seen you act in the film nija with sonam kapoor right. tell me how did that happen I mean I believe you did tell me earlier that you know that actor bit is deep down in you Absolutely but how did Nietzsche come by So I was on a side in Bandra I was uh, finishing a side in Bandra and I got a call from Kanika Berry she's a casting director and uh, she said that I want to you know audition you for a movie and I said okay what is this movie about and she said it's about a hijack and I want to audition you for the terrorist role and I said laughing so she said why are you laughing I said nothing and I went the next day Uh I went in a black patani and I had gelled my hair and everything. There again I'm going to interrupt the black patani terrorist fashion sense <laughs> color black all comes in. You have to get the character right yeah, get the mood. Right. But the only thing I didn't do was I got into this I gelled my hair completely and I went. So she looked at me and she's like uh, you've not come here for modeling <laughs> you've come here to be a terrorist. Mm. And I was like oh, damn uh, so what do I do? She said I want you to be muffled I want you to be messy I want you to be you know raunchy right? I'm like okay. Um so I went Aram Nagar in Varsova I went there I took like 10 rounds I did some push ups I put some mud on my face I got in the character and I had Arabic dialogues so I'd learned them the previous night and I'd gone and during the audition um she's like Mansoor was my character's name yeah. is more uh, he's very nervous you need yeah. to be more nervous anxious, as I remember anxious yeah. nervous The real character was like that in the film. I mean in the rea- in reality on the Pan Am flight. Okay. And we know this because of reasons. Um and I said okay and I was just not getting it. I was any is nervous because my first movie audition that I ever wow. gave. I had never given one. That's why I laughed on the phone because I've never given a movie audition. So um she said you need to be a little more you know scared. I slapped myself twice hard. She said what are you doing? I said it's okay. I I know. I mean just let me do it. She said please go for it. and she's like done that that was the take and she said done i thought okay you no know, i'm not going to be selected and i went out and there were some good looking girls and guys who were coming for the audition i was like there's no chance i'm getting in but uh, the next day i got a call and they said that you're shortlisted and i thought okay you know it's just the shortlisted i won't be selected a week or two later they called saying that we wanted to come for a second audition a week later they said you're on board oh wow and I have gone to my dad's cabin and just told him that dad I've got a movie it's uh, shooting is in the month of April and I am selected okay bye and I've left <laughs> he came back home and he's like what movie what is this and then I sat and I explained it to him so he was not very happy but eventually when he saw me working really hard on my projects and doing the late night shifts for the movie he kind of To came around and been like so you were already doing interior yes. designing with dad yeah and then you did these 10 rounds just for the audition so <laughs> yes. that passion was really out there that yeah. you wanted to it pursue was. acting i manifested this akina really i have manifested Tell this because i was um, i remember in my room i was doing this gig like a talk show that was very famous that time and i actually put it out there saying that it's been 7 years as as acting as if i'm already 
as an actor, actor and I've really made it very big wow. and all. And uh, I said that, you know, it's been seven years. After seven years, I got my first movie audition and it clicked. Nidra exactly happened seven years after I joined Baldiwell Associates. Wow. Exactly seven years later, I got a movie and called... And you need to manifest first... something right now. I know, really. <laughs> and this show is going to be amazing. Okay, super. Now tell me, do you see any parallels between the way you bring out characters to life on screen and the way you bring spaces to life for the client? Uh, well, for me, every project comes with a brief of the client, which is very peculiar to that client. Every client is so different, mm. you know, and, I, and maybe it's the acting bits that I get here, but... The whole feeling of understanding a person, mm. of understanding how they are as people, what do they like? For example, if you know there's a client who likes um, everything very muted, everything very you know uh, clean and uh, simple. Just giving them that is going to make them happy. But mm. what is it that you can add to that to that can excitement. make yeah, give that excitement or give that surprise element? So those are the things I like to understand very, very much in detail with the clients and then curate my designs around it. So I think it's a lot to do with like how a director directs his film. So the, you're, we are the directors till the time the project. Do you think storytelling is hmm. important in design? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. The way you narrate the project and the concepts like and we work like a script. Yeah. And uh, the clients have to feel like, wow, yeah, okay, this is the guy, this is the design I want to work with. It's, it gives me a high when the clients say that, you know, okay, yeah, you are the one we want to go ahead with because they've understood where I'm coming from or they've understood the project, the analysis that I've done and the designs that I've come up with. When they like it, it's, I think there's no better high than, no awards can give you that high. When the client is happy, happy. it's yeah. the only thing that really matters. And because he's going to live in there. So absolutely. he's getting that happiness on a day-to-day. -day. Day-to-day basis. So that's a different high yeah, altogether. Absolutely. Tell me, have you ever used design to convey an emotion? Or a narrative, maybe. Yes. Uh, this recent project, I was in Spain last year and I saw the flamenco dance for the first time. And I was in between designing this bungalow that we're doing in a brutalist concept. So the client said that, you know, brutalism is too stark and it's too, it's jarring to the eye. So I said, we'll figure a way out to, you know, soften it, but let's just... Mm. And while watching the flamenco, the... The, there's a mix of masculine and feminine energies that come onto that platform. And uh, I just had tears and goosebumps because wow. I was just feeling that there's something is happening. It evoked something in me. Mm. And immediately he said that the man is so strong, the woman becomes strong and then again she becomes soft and the man also becomes soft. And then this tapping that happens and something happened inside me and I said the brutalist concept will be collaborated with a flamenco concept. And getting the feminine masculine energies together, so if it's like, you know, the tap yeah, dance that, that they do sure. during the whole flamenco, make ripples out of that in glass. Oh, Design wow. vibrations with textures. So that's the kind of stuff we got into and then this entire thing, it's still work in progress. Super, but, nice. Yeah. I want to touch a topic with you which hasn't been spoken about openly at least. Wow, what is this? Mental health. For and you know, like I see a lot of burnouts. Every fraternity talks about burnouts, yeah. be it careers, be it actors, be it all of it. But in our design space, because you work on projects that require real high level of creativity, and hence there's a burnout. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? What is your take on that? How so do you a, maintain that balance? It's a very important topic, and I'm so glad this is a question here. I've been wanting to talk about this on my social media for a very long time. I have in the past. I think, okay, so it's as simple, right? If I have a pain on my in my hand, I'll go to an orthopedic. I'll go to a doctor and show it. So if you have pain in your mind, if yeah. you have thoughts that are not supporting your daily routine, why not seek help? Mm. So, and especially, I, mean, I wouldn't say only designers. I think in general, everyone is stressed out nowadays a lot more i think after covid things have changed a lot drastically yeah. we've been like extreme cases of being so calm uh during covid 
no work, less work, da da da, mm. to okay, suddenly no. now coming back yeah. to life and everything is moving around so fast. Uh, we've gone through a lot of emotions. Mm. And if you see right now, the therapists are very busy because there are yeah, so many sure. people who go to for therapy and I'm glad they do. I've been doing therapy for years now. Wow. And it's not only because I, first people used to think that, are you crazy? Why would you go for therapy? crazy yeah. you're sensible and to maintain your sanity with therapy correct so acceptance is the first level absolutely Ab acceptance is the first thing i think i think more than acceptance also the fact that um, you know that there is something wrong mm. to accept that is mm. a big deal and when it comes to designers getting burnt out i mean sorry that was a question yeah yeah um i think every field everyone's getting burnt out nowadays True. But uh, no, because you know, uh, your stakeholders are involved in every step, yeah, right. And uh, because of the various platforms that are available now, you kind of get a lot of critical feedback also, along with appreciation, right? So that can be damaging at times to your thought processes, your creativity, and that could lead to uh, you know, mental wavelengths moving here and there, right? That's what I wanted. Do you seek help? how to kind of cope with that nowadays because there are so many platforms which are available to kind of you know challenge what you think would be the right thing to do it's yes, again very interestingly i have it's been a year but i've realized this just being you mm. it has really helped me uh, the times that i'm faking it and trying to be someone i'm mm. not it just doesn't work so earlier last year especially after covid i had in the 2021 22 I had become a different person with my clients. I said, let's try it out. Okay. You should not do this. You should do this. Let it be this way. Let the clients talk like this, but you'll talk like this. And it didn't work. Oh. People said, no one called me fake, but I felt very fake about myself. Hmm. And now that I'm being myself and being who I am, they approach me in a very different manner. Uh -huh. I'm not saying become very casual and let yeah. the client take the better of you. No. You know, that obviously clients, you give them a little finger, they oh, like, oh, no. <laughs> not that way. So you keep your ground on what you think is right and wrong. But uh, just be you. Be a little bit more open and open your chakras or whatever they're called. Yeah. And let, things, the right energy let things come in. Let the energies flow. Let yeah. it just be more, you know, Because you, know, you guys work in great uh, pressure deadlines, right? Yeah. Like, like you said, right, like yeah. your, uh, whatever project which you had to turn out in four months and stuff like that. So that all plays a role on your mental health. Yeah. So what would you think you need to kind of do to just any techniques that you would use? So what I do is usually, uh, for me, communication is the key. I absolutely love conversations. Talk about it, discuss with your client, tell them that, listen, you're not getting it. Let me try to explain it to you. Educate them. Mm -hmm. If there are times when you spoke about criticism, uh, they don't like something. That we've designed this table, they'll be like, no, this is available everywhere. Yeah. You know, I don't like this. Yeah. Yes, it's available everywhere. But in your space, this is not what needs to be highlighted is why this table is here. Mm -hmm. The other highlights are already there. Explain, talk it out, reason it out. Communication. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I really, really work how do you think the design community can foster an environment where discussing mental health becomes a norm and is encouraged? Because I don't see that happening. Have more panel discussions on mental health. Not only design, have, yeah, not only have talks with Sakina <laughs> and establish on these topics that are, you know, different and not spoken about. I think we really need to do that because, um, for example, I've been hearing a lot of, on Instagram, I get a lot of messages. So when I put up these um, posts where I have gone wrong on something or I have I put up one or two posts in the, uh, on my BTS where we had made a mistake and you'll be surprised I had some 300 messages telling me that oh you also make this mistake you also do this mm -hmm. as if you know we are not yeah, human we are some gods I mean yes. a, a I'm not some senior designer over here okay I don't consider myself to be some senior designer here B I'm as human as humans are I'm a designer, I can make mistakes and it needs to be told because people on social media are only seeing the best parts of the world, mm -hmm. the best parts of you. So it's important to create that awareness and let people feel that, okay, it is normal to go wrong. It yeah. is normal to make mistakes. Like I have 100 mistakes that happen on sites. Sure. And it's not intentional ever, obviously. But there are things that happen. I mean, there are sites, there are big sites. There's misunderstandings. They're working with laborers. They're working with different class of society uh, in different ways so 
there are bound to have issues. You, they can't think like you. Mm. So there are going to be issues, but you have to deal with them and you know, make it normal. Yeah. Tell me one thing, Ali. For global exposure, okay, Sorry. we have a lot of our fashion designers going global, setting trends like Gaurav Gupta and I believe uh, you know, Manish Manotra. They all set up uh, go global trends. How would you take Indian designers, interior designers, when will that happen? When do they land up and become trendsetters and global purview? I think they already are trendsetters in a global. way. We are not as glamorous and you're not out there but that's also happening ali i've seen a project of yours the quirk box yeah. in uh, the book the house of joy a german yeah. publication yes, right? That's right and uh, you have it all globally around it's i think a berlin publication yes it is berlin. okay tell me what is missing in our indian designers to get out there i mean like gaurav gupta does a show in london and we have a lot of our indian fashion designers who are out there Tell me what is missing in our Indian uh, interior designers to be out there. I don't think there is anything missing, honestly. I do feel that uh, we all, I mean, most of the designers, like product designers, interior designers, who are launching their, you know, products and their furniture pieces, are going global. Is just that it's not talked about too much. Mm. Uh, when you talk about any of these designers that you spoke about, the fashion designers, they have... Um, they have these parades, they have these red carpets mm. where their clothes are seen because they are more glamorous and all of that. It's talked about more. Celebrities are wearing it. Yeah. But doing a house, maybe the celebrities don't want to show that house. Yeah. We've done um, a project in the US two years ago. We are doing a project in Kuwait right now. We're in another international project that might be coming down. So we are doing it. But it's just that it's not talked about as much. Why? I don't know. I'm mm. also figuring it out. But it's, I think when you discuss it and compare it with fashion designers, it's because of the glam sham that yeah. there, there yeah, is around, probably, the paparazzi right. and all that's there around. And the events around it. Events also, around so they it. They get all the attention. So the hype is about that particular dress on that particular day mm. or an award function. For interiors, it's more like a I'll more classy. I'll wait for the showstopper home of the day. <laughs> it's more classy and more like, yeah. we are there. We don't need to like really, really get out there. Get out there. Okay, another thing, Ali, tell me, uh, I see your social media account, <laughs> your Instagram, you're all the time partying, you're attending a lot of events, and you're all out there. Tell me, is there another side to this? Okay, first and foremost, I'm, I'm not always partying. It's one Saturday and I put 10 pictures that doesn't mean the whole week I've been partying. <laughs> because everyone comes up to me and tells me the same thing that, you know, we want a life like yours. I'll say, okay, then you're married. Sorry, that's not my fault. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm single. I'm enjoying my life. Uh, after my work hours, I have my gym. I have some of the other kind of social networking scenes that I do because I enjoy people. I enjoy meeting people. And that means partying with them. I mean, so be it. But uh, even now Instagram again, right? The social mm. media, you go for a five minute party, you pose over there, you take a picture, you've left in five minutes, no one knows. People think whole night you've been partying. Yeah. So oh, that's the that image people. that people have and that's what a lot of people think about me. But sometimes it's just events and stuff. And, uh, but otherwise, it's a very balanced life. Like okay. my work routine and the Tell social me networking. your physical fitness routine. How do you, because if you're out on weekends and... How do you keep yourself so fit? I know you cycle, but what else? You know me. She knows I cycle because <laughs> she's as much as a, of a sobo person, and uh, we meet on uh, walks and cycling rounds. Yes. yes. Uh, well, I have um, had some back issues and stuff because of which I had to get into a routine. Mm. Uh, I was very fit earlier. Now I'm not that fit. I want to get better. But um, yeah, I, I do a bit of my gym, cycling, and also so this new strength training and some physiotherapy to strengthen my back and the core. So working on all of that. And tell and, me, uh, cuisines, eating out, what does Ali like to eat? Uh, yeah, I, I do eat a lot out. But I honestly, to be very honest, it's, I love my house ka dal chawal. Please, Ali. I love it. I'm a very, very old school guy that a lot of people don't know. When I say these things, people go like, you don't seem like that on Instagram. But Instagram <laughs> is not reality, guys. Yeah, it's a perception. It's a perception. I love dal chawal. I love my kebabs. I love my keema. I love the house ka food. You give me that, I'm sorted. I can have dal chawal every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Good to know. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, Ali, tell me, uh, you've been a part of both. You've been Bollywood and now if I call it the design wood, if I could say <laughs> it. 
So, uh, tell me, like actors, right? They have these perceptions of, you know, the life they live, the way they dress, the way they carry themselves. Do you think that is a shadow in our industry also now? Yes. Absolutely is. Uh, well, I would, I'm not such a big part of Bollywood, whatever little that I've done, but I've been around the fraternity and the people from the fraternity. Yes, it is very glam and sham and all of that is there. But interior designers are no less. We all love the limelight. We what are, what are these magazines that y'all are getting us featured in all the time and all of that? It is about that. It is about uh, the attention. It is about seeking that attention. Uh, after a photo shoot that I do with the guys, I'm like, okay, take my picture. Yeah, I've got these clothes. I'm going to wear this. So that when the feature comes out in the magazine or wherever, I want my picture also to go. So it is, it is uh, getting there. Maybe not as glamorous, but hundred percent we are getting there. We are much more conscious. And I don't think this is something that's just come about right now. I remember my dad and, you know, if I could just take a few names like Mr. Rajesh Patel, Mr. Prem Nath, um, and all of them and their entire group. I go through those old pictures of Triple ID and, you know, those showcase events and they all were like crisp in their suits, yeah. their ties, the way they conducted themselves. It's just that now that time there was no Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Now we have those kind of social media platforms that give you the opportunity to be out there. Out there, yeah. So everyone wants to be out there, and why not? So True. I think we are getting there. So then, uh, do we? Do you think we're close to starting an architect times? Because <laughs> Bombay Times is all about celebs, and now we have design celebs. So do we start an architect times? I think soon? established to start this very soon. <laughs> okay, to tell me, Ali, of all this, we've had some fabulous conversations. Tell me, what is your take away from the journey you've had so far? What is your learning? So for me, I think um, no work is too small and uh, no work is so big that you start feeling like you're God and you made it. You're always learning, so stay humble, stay grounded and I mean, that's going to take you so far. And follow your heart. Hamesha dil ki suno, hamesha. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ali, for being here and thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been lovely being here. Thank, Thank you. you.